Greetings everyone. Today I want to discuss what tools and options are available from Lycor to get fully corrected fluxes from your eddy covariance measurement system automatically and in real time. I have a brief outline of what we will cover in this webinar, but before we get started, I wanted to present a poll question to the audience to see how familiar we are with the eddy covariance method. So the first poll question is, how familiar are you with the eddy covariance method? Choice A is, I am new to the method. Choice B, I've used the method in my research. And choice C is, I consider myself an expert. I'm going to give everybody a moment to make their choices. And once everybody had a chance, uh, we'll move on. Thanks for your responses. Uh, regardless of our level of uh, familiarity or expertise in the eddy covariance method, this slide represents a generalized workflow for the flux measurement. Uh, there are several steps, at, and at each stage of the, um, the workflow, the decisions that we make affect what will be done on the next stage. For example, the design stage is a critical stage because it affects all the stages in the process. A well-designed experiment avoids many of the previously known mistakes in experiment and uh, maintenance, but it can also recover from unforeseen or unexpected interruptions. Another big part of the experiment uh, stages is the data processing stage. It involves several computations to precondition the data and then to account for limitations in the uh, setup or in the instruments chosen for the measurement. Since the eddy covariance measurement generates large amounts of data, it's not at all efficient to try and perform each of these calculations by hand. Uh, some of these calculations may be straightforward, like converting units, but uh, the frequency response corrections, for example, could be a bit more uh, complex and uh, so it's not at all efficient to try and do this for every half hour of data by hand. So at the design stage, most researchers will choose to go with one of these options. Some research groups will write their own data processing code. Maybe it's in Fortran or C++ or it's in MATLAB or another platform. The advantage here is that the program can be modified and can be tailored for the specific site. However, it requires a lot of time to understand the theory behind the eddy covariance method. And in addition to understanding the method, you also need to have some expertise and some um, experience programming or writing a, a robust uh, processing code. In addition, if the person who wrote the program leaves, then the group there needs to figure out how the program that was written by the previous person works. So there's a steep learning curve and a lot of effort uh, is necessary for the next researcher uh, to take over. The other option on the right side here is to use software programs currently available, uh, such as EddyPro, EddyRe, TK3, and others. The benefit of using this uh, already available programs is that uh, there's no development time that's lost. It's already there but you may lose some of the customizability, so you may not be able to customize it for your site. In addition, some software packages still require significant effort to learn how to use the software. So this takes us back to the workflow. Generally speaking, the data processing step is a large chunk of the effort and a typical flux measurement. So the question then becomes, what is the purpose of the experiment? Uh, and uh, how can we achieve that purpose efficiently? So let me ask the audience, uh, what is the purpose of your uh, eddy covariance experiment or measurement? This poll question asks, uh, what do you study using the eddy covariance method? Are you studying carbon cycle or are you studying the water cycle? Or are you studying the climate change or agricultural research or are you focused mainly on micrometrology or turbulent transport, transport of gases and energy? I'm going to give everyone a moment uh, to respond to the poll. So 
So for studies with the where the primary focus is not the study of turbulent transport, automating the data processing provides significant savings in time and resources. Uh, when you're not spending a whole lot of time developing a uh, processing routine or writing code to understand uh, the, how the data should be processed, that's the time you can spend more in investigating the relationship between the fluxes, the ecosystem response, and the water cycle, and things like that. So far, the choices available to automate data processing fall under these two broad categories. So on the left side here, we have the data logger based programs for computing diagnostic uh, flux uh, so, uh, estimates. These are used a fair amount, they, but they still require that the data go through uh, the post-processing stage to apply the remaining corrections and get final publishable results. On the other hand, the PC-based systems require so much effort and time, therefore uh, only a few research groups have implemented such a system. SmartFlux is a new product available from Lycor that addresses the concerns we've been uh, discussing. It provides fully corrected publishable quality fluxes in real time at your research site. SmartFlux is a small add-on module that installs inside the LI7550 analyzer interface unit. And because it installs inside the LI7550, it doesn't require additional enclosure. Uh, it consumes less than 2 watts. Uh, and SmartFlux uses the EDIPRO processing engine to compute fluxes and apply all the corrections necessary. It uses the GPS to get uh, absolute time information from satellites and provide clock synchronization at the site between any instruments that you have, or it provides clock synchronization from station to station that may be located in different places. So SmartFlux uses EDIPRO, but some of you may not be familiar with EDIPRO, so let me try to explain what EDIPRO is in the next few slides. EDIPRO is a free and open source software that computes fluxes and applies all corrections to get accurate final flux estimates. Uh, Lycor introduced EDIPRO as the data processing alternative in 2011. EDIPRO is based on work in Europe to develop software and algorithm to standardize data processing in EDICovariance research community. So Lycor adapted EDIPRO and it made it an easy to use complete data processing software. Uh, just to give you some highlights, since Lycor introduced EDIPRO, over 2,900 scientists in over 155 countries have downloaded the software and are using it for data processing. Many researchers have used the software to get well-corrected publishable fluxes. In fact, there are over 25 citations in the literature from the last uh, year and half or two years or so in peer-reviewed literature, and that number is growing. Flux networks such as Ameriflux in the US and ICOS in Europe are adapting EDIPRO as a standard software for flux processing. Uh, another example is the Chinese Ecological Research Network. They're using EDIPRO and the SmartFlux system um, as their standard method of uh, measuring evapotranspiration across the Chinese mainland. EDIPRO is available for free download from Lycor, uh, and you can go to our website and uh, get it uh, from Lycor.com slash EDIPRO. So I mentioned a few things about EDIPRO. I want to see if our audience is familiar with EDIPRO. So I'm going to throw this poll question. And the question is, how familiar are you with EDIPRO? And I'll give everyone a moment to make their choices. Thanks for the responses. Um, so let's take a little glimpse at what uh, data processing options exist in EDIPRO. Uh, EDIPRO uh, has a lot of information on our website in terms of documentation and videos and tutorials. And there are tutorials and training that we provide on EDICovariance method in general. So if you need more information, please visit our website. Over here on this slide, what I have is some of the options in EDIPRO. For example, one of the data processing steps we mentioned was the rotation. So EDIPRO gives you 
uh, four different rotation options. Uh, two of them are similar, the planner fit in different formulations, and uh, the other two is the double and triple rotation. So EdiPro allows you to choose which method you, uh, you want to use for your data processing as a, when it comes to rotation. It also does the same thing when it comes to detrending. You have four options, block averaging, linear detrending, running mean, and exponential running mean. So you have this option again. You can pick which one is more appropriate or which one you're more comfortable with. Uh, another uh, step in the data processing is the adjusting for time lag or time delay between uh, gas measurements and sonic measurements. Edipro again provides you several options to choose from. Um, so for many of the data processing steps, Edipro gives you multiple options for each step so that you can customize the processing to your site. And Here's another slide that shows more of the uh, options available. For example, for a statistical test, uh, you can customize how the spike count uh, is done or how spikes are removed from your time series data. Uh, you have an option of uh, multiple outputs. You have the option of calculating random uncertainty. You have the option of calculating a one-dimensional footprint. So these are all the options um, that are available in Edipro. And this is one of the reasons Edipro has become uh, so much more popular because it allows you to do many things uh, within one software. You don't have to write a new routine to um, implement each one of these things. It's just a, an, a checkbox or a choice you make in the software to process your data in the, in the first option or in the second option. So SmartFlux uses Edipro at the site to do the computation. So it's, since it's the Edipro engine inside, it can do all the corrections we just talked about. This, this, this means SmartFlux applies all the necessary corrections. It brings the type of processing used to get publishable fluxes right at the station. Remember this slide? We talked about this slide. You know, these are the steps in data processing. All of these steps are applied by SmartFlux. So we have some idea. I hope that uh, we have some idea about what SmartFlux is capable of doing. Uh, so the, the next section of the presentation, I want to talk about how SmartFlux integrates into a Lycor eddy covariance system. So here's a picture of an eddy covariance system or an eddy covariance station. The station has the high-speed gas analyzers and wind sensors and the slow measurements, uh, the biological and meteorological measurements, uh, which we're going to call the biomet measurements. Uh, the central point of the system is the LI7550. So if you have the LI7550, SmartFlux integrates into an existing LI7550. So you have the picture of the LI7550 opened up here, and uh, you can see the SmartFlux installed inside the LI7550. Abby, there seems like uh, uh, there's a question from the audience. Can you please uh, read that question? Sure, Israel. Someone has asked, can I use SmartFlux with my LI7500? Thanks for the question. Um, so the the LI75, SmartFlux works with the LI7550. And uh, if you have the old open pass sensor from Lycor, the LI7500, uh, you can get an upgrade that includes the SmartFlux. In fact, the, since the SmartFlux has been released, all the upgrades will include the SmartFlux unit. So if you have the old LI7500, uh, you can upgrade to the LI7500A, and you get this upgrade uh, adds the LI7550 to your system, and it just upgrades the sensor head. So you have the same sensor head, but a new analyzer interface unit and that will come with the SmartFlux unit. And for any new LI7500A or LI7200 purchases, SmartFlux is compatible right from the get-go. So I'm going to move on. So how do we install SmartFlux into the LI7550? There are basically three steps. Uh, the first step is you remove the two screws on the left side of the um, cover inside the LI7550, and then you unplug one cable that connects the power to the LI7550 and instead place in um, a cable that comes with the SmartFlux unit. And after you do that, 
you put the smart flux where those two screws uh, were to on the cover. You connect the Ethernet cable, and the installation, the hardware installation part is done. And it would look something like this. You have the smart smart flux unit here. The GPS goes up on that top corner. The power connector is down here, and the Ethernet goes into one of the um, Ethernet ports inside the LI7550. Once the hardware installation is done, you open up the GHG software or the LI7500A or LI7200 software, and you click on the button that says Smart Flux, and it will show you the unit that's connected to your system, and you choose to use that uh, Smart Flux unit, and the software will tell you um, what Smart Flux unit it's connected to and it's using for data processing. So one of the questions we've had about the LI7550 and Smart Flux is how everything comes together. What's the, what are the components in the system? We did a, we show a picture earlier on uh, of the instruments on the tripod. This is a block diagram of where uh, the main com components are and how they interact with the uh, LI7550. So as you can see on this picture, the LI7550 is the central hub of the system. So you have your high-speed sensors, the LI7200 sensor head, the LI7500A sensor head, or the methane analyzer, and your sonic animometers. They all come into the uh, LI7550, so high-speed data is coming into the LI7550. At the same time, the biomet data and the net radiation, for example, or soil measurements are coming through the data logger interface into the LI7550. Uh, if you have a smart flux on the right side, smart flux is continuously computing uh, fluxes whenever there's a file that contains uh, enough data to compute fluxes. And on the uh, right top corner, you can have a cell modem that's at the site and you have access to the site from anywhere. Or you can have a satellite modem and you're be, you could be sending a summary or diagnostic information at a given interval, or you can have a direct connection to your laptop computer if you're at the site visiting. So once we install SmartFlux, how does the data flow in the system? What's the first step and what? how does um, the data get collected and computed? So the next slide presents this um, uh, flow in the uh, in the system. So the LI7550 is continuously collecting high speed data and metadata with the um, inside on the USB inside the LI7550. So that means if you have a CO2 analyzer LI7200 or LI7500A, uh, the CO2 data is being collected on the USB. At the same time, if you have the Sonic installed to uh, or connected to the LI7550. That's also being uh, sampled and stored with the uh, with the CO2 and water vapor data in the USB. If you have a methane analyzer, that also high speed data at 10 hertz or 20 hertz is being collected and being stored inside the LI7550 USB. Now the the LI7550 does not only store data; it also stores the metadata, so information about the data, so how the instruments are set up and what separation exists between the instruments and what's inside the column of data, each column of data. Is it CO2 concentration or is it temperature? It contains all that information. So the high-speed data and the metadata are stored on the USB. At the same time, the biomet data and uh, is being collector from the biomet data logger interface. So if you have soil moisture sensors, net radiation sensors, spark sensors, uh, some slow uh, sensors, they're all being collected by the uh, data logger interface and the LI7550 communicates with the interface to grab the data every couple of, uh, every minutes or so. Uh, and then once a half hour passes where this type of data is being collected from all systems available. The LI7550 then compresses all the files and zips them into one GHG file. So this GHG file will contain the high frequency or high speed data, the metadata about the high frequency data. It will contain the slow biomet data and also the metadata about the slow biomet data. So everything that describes the data 
and allows us to process it is in that GHG file. So as soon as that GHG file is created, it's shipped over to SmartFlux. SmartFlux then knows what's inside the data and how the instruments are set up so it can start processing the data and apply all the necessary corrections that account for the site setup, that account for the nature of the data, that add any additional information or additional improvements that can be gained from the biomet data. So SmartFlux processes all the data and produces outputs. SmartFlux keeps the a backup copy of the raw data in its own storage, while the LI7550 keeps the raw data, even though it copies it over to SmartFlux, it doesn't delete it. So it keeps a copy on the USB, you get a copy, uh, a backup copy on the SmartFlux um, storage. Um, after SmartFlux is done processing the data, it ships the results back to the LI7550. So the LI7550 then ends up with um, the raw data, the processed data, and the LI7550 compiles a summary of the processed data. Oh, Abby, looks like we have another question from the audience. Uh, can you read it out loud for us, please? Sure. Someone is wondering, is data logging stopped during processing? So the question was, does the LI7550 stop logging data uh, when the fluxes are being computed? Um, that's that's a, a critical question, but it, the, the answer is no, it doesn't, because this happens, uh, all of this happens at the same time. As data is being logged, uh, the LI7550, if it has enough data for half an hour, it zips it up and sends it to SmartFlux. But at the same time, it's opening up the next uh, half hour file and writing the data that's coming in from all the sensors into that file. So uh, no, the data is not stopped for um, processing. We, the data logging is not stopped for processing. We continue to log data even as um, the files are being processed. All right, let's move on. So how do we inter interact with this system? We look, we use the LI7500 or uh, 7500A or LI7200 software. It's a Windows interface. Um, this win Windows interface allows us to configure the system and also look at some of the results uh, from SmartFlux. Uh, particularly, it contains results for up to the last seven days from um, uh, from today. So if you go to the site or if you're looking at your site remotely, you can see what happened in terms of fluxes for the last uh, several days. And there's huge benefits to looking at this. If you were just looking at CO2 concentration or water vapor concentration or temperature or wind speeds, um, it may not be obvious to, uh, to uh, the untrained eye or even to the trained eye to know how they will affect the fluxes. But you can directly look at the final f computed fluxes and know that if there was any issue in the final result. You don't, you don't have to wait you know, to process the data to understand if there was an issue or not. So that's the one of the benefits of looking at the data right um, um, when you connect to the instrument and it's processed and final. There are, as I mentioned, several uh, uh, folders or outputs from uh, the SmartFlux and the system that are stored on the USB inside the LI7550. So if you open up that USB, you will see four folders. There's the archive folder, the raw data folder, the results folder, and the summaries folder. So let's look at what each one contains. So uh, the first one is the summaries. This is the most useful uh, information is found in these files. There are two files in this folder for each day. Uh, the first one is final fluxes for each half hour of the day computed by flux uh, by smart flux, which we call the flux summaries. And the second file is an average value for each half hour of the of the day for all the variables measured by the gas analyzer. So if the gas analyzer, for example, is LI7200, all the variables the gas analyzer measures and is logging, you can get an average value here. So you can use um, these files. Just looking at these files gives you the summary uh, results and mean 
uh, values for the ver for the different variables. And the reason we have these values uh, or files is um, if you are in a remote location where you may not have the bandwidth, so the data plan to transfer all the raw data and all the results, these summarized uh, f files contain enough information to diagnose any problems or to understand what your uh, uh, system and um, ecosystem is doing. And you don't need to have a, a large data plan uh, or a high bandwidth. So you can use satellite or you know all generation networks like 2G. Uh, they can uh, safely transfer these files. The next folder that is inside the um, this LI7550 USB is the results folder. Now the results folder contains a zipped file for each half hour. That zipped file comes directly from SmartFlux. And as SmartFlux runs EdiPro, EdiPro provides outputs for each half hour that contain three folders, INI, log, and output. The INI folder contains the project file that was used to process the data in EdiPro. So in case you want to reprocess the data and compare what you get on your desktop to what you got out of SmartFlux, you can use this project file. The other folder is the log. This is what the EdiPro engine produces uh, to notify any problems or errors that happen during processing. Uh, the last folder is the output. The output contains any output files requested from EdiPro. So that's the out, what's contained inside the results uh, folder. So EdiPro, for those who are familiar with EdiPro, there are two processing options. Um, there's the express mode and the advanced mode. Uh, the express mode is essentially a predefined selection of the processing methods. And it's common to all starts up. So if you uh, set up, if you use uh, express mode, you use the same processing option. Um, it's mostly okay for uh, several sites, but it's not appropriate for all sites. So uh, even though Express may work okay for most sites, um, it would be okay and even advisable to kind of customize the processing to fit your specific site. That's when we can use the advanced mode. Uh, the advanced mode allows us to choose uh, which methods are applied, and also allows us to use more advanced methods. Uh, so how do we do advanced methods? There are basically four steps. Um, we need to collect at least one or two files from the uh, system, so we need one GHG file at least. And if we want to use some advanced uh, uh, data processing options like the planner fit and some spectral, in-situ spectral corrections, uh, we need a, a lot more data, so at least three weeks or one month of data for, uh, for doing uh, the, the more advanced options. So we take that file and we launch EdiPro. Uh, it needs to be version 5 or more or higher. And we go into the SmartFlux configuration. So what EdiPro allows us to do with version 5 or higher is configure and choose our processing options and that will allow us to create a SmartFlux pa package that contains our choices on how the data is processed uh, and how data is screened. And then we upload the final stages, we upload that package to the LI7550 via the Windows interface. And it looks something like this. You click on the uh, SmartFlux icon on the LI7500A or LI7200 software and you get two options, SmartFlux and processing options. So SmartFlux uses express mode by default. So if you set up and connect to a SmartFlux, immediately uh, SmartFlux starts processing using the express option. But if you created an advanced package, you can upload um, the advanced file here by clicking on, on this button. And if for some reason you start looking at the data after you upload the advanced file and it doesn't look like it's working as well as you expected, you can just click the use express mode and it would revert back to uh, the express mode. So these are the processing options. And so once you have this set up and it's running, then we go into how you monitor the system. The system monitoring can happen when you go to visit the site. Uh, and you connect directly. 
uh, to the station and you use a laptop or uh, you have you may have a computer at the site and you plug in the Ethernet cable, the light core uh, Windows interface for the LI7200 or LI7500A comes up, you connect and you can go through the steps that we've been talking about in terms of setup, or configuration. The, the other option is to monitor the site remotely, uh, maybe from your office or from your lab or from where you are attending a conference. Um, for that, you would need a cell modem or some other modem to uh, make your uh, station accessible from uh, uh, from elsewhere. Uh, Lycor provides cell modems uh, for the United States and several other countries. You can go to our website to see what's available. And we can also help you, uh, if we don't have a modem for you, we can help you identify um, what should be available on, and what would work with our system. Um, I'm going to ask uh, the audience another poll question to kind of get a, a feel for how many of you use modems and remote connections. And the question is, do you have remote access to monitor your site? Thank you for your response. Uh, regardless of what what method you have to monitor the site, whether you're going to the site or where, whether you have a cell modem, the you can have the same experience uh, using the LI7200 and LI7500A software. Um, you connect to the instrument by typing an IP address uh, and the same configuration options are available. So you could look at fluxes that were computed for the last several days or you can change configuration. You can look at uh, real-time data and you can also look at the wind distribution uh, of uh, the last several days and if you need to maybe change the position of your tower or adjust uh, the orientation of your instruments based on the history of the wind distribution you can uh, kind of get that information from this um, plot. The other thing you can do whether you're connected directly or remotely uh, is to do the data transfer uh, the uh, auto downloader is now integrated into the main screen, so you can click that download button and it opens up the uh, data transfer software. This data transfer software allows you to select multiple files or just transfer a few files. And you can also transfer, set up an uh, automated transfer. So you can uh, tell the software to do this transfer every night at midnight or every morning. So every morning when you come to the office, you can have the last day of uh, maybe results only or maybe results and the raw data transferred to your uh, computer or laptop. So this way you can monitor the system, get the data, whether you are uh, connected directly to the station or uh, you're connected remotely through a cell modem or a satellite modem. So in summary, uh, data processing, as we saw, is a significant portion of the Eddy covariance research, and SmartFlux, by using Eddy Pro, allows us to significantly minimize the effort we need to spend in data processing. And SmartFlux installs that inside the LI7550, and it provides us a fully corrected final fluxes automatically and at the site. And because it uses Eddy Pro, um, which is a software people use to get from raw data to publishable fluxes, uh, SmartFlux allows us to get from measurement to publishable fluxes right at the site and in real time. So I want to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead and uh, submit them and we'll try our best to answer them. That's all the time we have for live questions. I'd like to thank Israel for the presentation, and I hope the information provided was beneficial to all the attendees. If you have any additional questions in the queue, our panelists will be sure to answer them before we close the webinar. Thank you, everyone, for attending.